My name is James Renton, and I'm going to be talking about Sir Mark Sykes, who was a prominent advisor to the British government during the First World War with regard to the Middle East and its future. Now, prior to 1914, the Ottoman Empire had governed the Middle East for four centuries, and British policy had been to uphold the empire so as to prevent a dangerous scramble for power between the European states in Western Asia, which would have threatened Britain's empire in India. But during the war, the Ottomans sided with the central powers. And gradually, the British government came to completely rethink its policy with regard to the future politics, the future shape of the Middle East after the war came to an end. And Sir Mark Sykes was absolutely central in influencing the thinking behind what became Britain's vision of the Middle East. He made the case that in order to rally the peoples of the region and their diasporas around the world, it was crucial that the British government advance a new policy of reformulating what had been known as Turkey in Asia as the Middle East based upon the principle of nationality. And he made the case that the British government had to support the idea of founding this new nation-based region specifically on the nations of the Arabs, Armenians, and the Jews. Now, in Sykes' estimation, this new national scheme for the Middle East would have behind it the support of particularly Britain and France. In other words, of European supervision for the foreseeable future. And behind this thinking was the racial assumptions of the day, that Jews and Arabs and Armenians were civilizationally between East and West, thus the Middle East, and that they required Western support, that they couldn't simply stand on their own two feet. Now, Sykes's vision of a new nation-based Middle East was not simply kept within smoke-filled rooms in Whitehall in London. Rather, it became the basis for a global propaganda campaign, because Sykes and other British policymakers believed that the promise of a new national future for these different communities would inspire support for the Allied war effort and also justify British expansion into the Middle East after the war. And so the British did their very best through all possible channels to communicate the idea of national freedom for the Jews and the Arabs in particular. Now, what Sykes did not anticipate was that in these communities, once they heard the message of national liberation and national freedom, that they would interpret that literally as thinking that they would see a new era of true, complete independence after the war. He didn't anticipate this because of his racial prejudices regarding these communities. And of course, these weren't held by just himself, but were widely evident across Whitehall and British society. The upshot is, by the end of the First World War, there was stirred by the British propaganda and wider Allied propaganda expectations of imminent independence amongst Jewish nationalists and Arab nationalists. And when the war came to, the end, came to an end, there resulted huge conflict between Jewish nationalists and Arab nationalists in the Holy Land in Palestine. Both communities felt that they had been promised independence in the future. And we're expecting that future to begin very soon. More broadly, Arabs in the rest of the Middle East also expected, particularly in Syria and in Iraq, to have complete independence. The end result was a wide-ranging eruption of violence against British and French uh, colonial rule in the Middle East after the First World War from 1918 through to 1920. And this period of protest and violence made it quite clear to the British and the French in the wider international community that they had to rethink their policies in the Middle East. 
They tried through the creation of the League of Nations to administer a new politics of control that would try to contain the desire for national freedom in the Middle East and to contain the conflict between Jews and Arabs in Palestine. But they couldn't put the genie back in the bottle. The desire for national freedom was not only in existence in the Middle East and its diasporas, but was a tremendous, powerful, ideological force. And what we see as a result in the decades that followed as a profound tension between a British and French and wider Western attempt to control the Middle East and to put the genie back in the bottle of the promise of national freedom, but never actually succeeding in doing so. Now, Sykes himself died in early 1919. And he didn't live to see the complete chaos and bloodshed that resulted from the policies that he did a great deal to influence. But even now today, in 2014, June 2014, there was the release of a video, a high-profile video, making the case that the order inaugurated by the British and French in the First World War in the Middle East was actually now coming to an end. That video was made and aired on the internet by ISIS. They made the case that it was the end now of the Sykes-Picot order. And that was a reference to one of the agreements that Sykes engaged in during the war with the French government about the future of the Middle East. Now, in actual fact, the Sykes-Picot agreement which was undertaken, agreed to in May 1916, was not about what ISIS claims in their video about the drawing of borders in the Middle East, but it was about this effort to assert European influence, European control in the Middle East. And arguably, the efforts by the West to try to control the Middle East have certainly not come to an end in 2014, and nor has the tension between that attempt at control and the desire for freedom among all of the diverse populations of the Middle East and their diasporas. It still remains. Now, I wouldn't like to say for a moment that all of this is the consequence of the thought and the work of one man. That would be completely wrong. But I would suggest that Sir Mark Sykes played a key role in advising the British government to go down this path of promoting the idea of national freedom in the Middle East while always clinging to the belief that they would manage to control this idea of a promise for national freedom in the region. He played a key role in this. He was hugely influential. And for that reason, I would contend that his legacy can still be seen to this day. <laughs>